hello again from Porto. It's day number three for me in Porto. I've got quite a few things on the agenda that I want to go see. Let's go get to it and check out some more sites in Porto. Okay, so I started my day out. I was gonna try and go to this place called Zenith, which has probably become like Instagram, social media famous. I feel like I've seen a lot of like the, I tried to watch a lot of Porto vlogs before I came to Porto and like a lot of people go to Zenith. The menu looks amazing. I think the pictures, the videos, everything I've seen of Zenith looks really good. The problem is, is because everyone buzzes about it, the line to get in is crazy. So a friend of mine um, who had been before had said to me, well, you know, if you can't get into Zenith, you should go to this place around the corner called Cafe Progresso. So ultimately when I got there and I saw the line was crazy, I said, hmm, let me listen to my friend and just go see what the line is around the corner. Well there was no line. I was standing in front of the guy who was making coffee at Cafe Progresso saying, okay, so should I put my name in somewhere? And he's like, what are you talking about? Just pick any seat you want. And I was like, oh, this will be great. Let's do this. So really great kind of, um, I think it's open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner which would have, I guess, been nice to know in terms of dinner. It's very, very casual kind of cafe vibes. But for breakfast, they do like eggs, omelets, they do um, smoothie bowls, smoothies, kind of pancakes, all the things. Um, they do have a menu that's dual in English and Portuguese. I ended up getting like the weirdest brunch combination ever, which I will sh intersperse some clips here. I decided to go for a green smoothie, which was like, I think, spinach, courgette, kiwi, uh, pineapple, a bunch of other good bits in there. Mint, super yummy, super refreshing. And I also got a just three year side of scrambled eggs, which were probably like several eggs scrambled in a bowl. It was pretty generous presentation and a caramel iced latte. <laughs> So basically lots of beverages and eggs. I'm such a weirdo. But I had a lot to eat last the night before. So I felt like that was what I needed in life and I was very happy with it. So after that, I went to a nearby church, which unfortunately because it's Sunday and it's a very Catholic city, I guess in country overall, the church was not, was only, you could go in if you just wanted to pray but you weren't supposed to go in and film and take footage. So I ended up actually not going in because I didn't want to disrupt the piece there. Um, and from there, I went on a really, really nice wander and stroll through tons and tons of beautiful little side streets in the area. So I'll make sure I'm putting some clips in there. Just really enjoyed kind of a long walk. <laughs> So the, the, the place that I went to is called Palacio de Bolsa, which actually means the Stuck Exchange Palace. So it is actually a palace of kind of uh, from the commercial, it's not a traditional palace that royals lived in, but in fact a kind of commercial palace, which literally trans, they used to have the Stock Exchange located there, but now there is no longer a Stock Exchange there and it's only in Lisbon. So it's actually a commer commercial palace. <laughs> That's really no longer an operation, but for nine euros, you can actually tour it. I did not plan this in advance. I just kind of like rolled my way in and said, when is your next tour? And they said, well, miss, it's actually in 30 minutes in English. And I said, 
let's do it. So for nine euros, I ended up asking the security guard there because they gave me like a little area to sit down and wait. I said, where's the, where's the bathroom? He pointed me around the corner and because of that, I actually got to sneak some cheeky pictures in before my tour started. <laughs> really excited about that. Um, and also visit the gift shop, which was a bit of a meh and let down. But the tour is probably like 30, 45 minutes in total. You can, you only can do tours if you want to go into, into this kind of the stock exchange palace. But I, I actually do recommend it. It's probably not something you necessarily think of to do when you go to Porto but it's actually pretty nice. Um, the architecture inside is absolutely dazzling. You, know, it's, it's the kind of place that, you, that takes your breath away a bit and you wanna take pictures. And you know, the kind of the history and the facts kind of about commerce in Porto and what that was about is quite interesting. room they show you because I really hadn't done my research I just looked at some images online and said yeah cool let's go let's go see this it seems like something I would like oh my god there is a room in the in the in there in the stock exchange palace called the Arab room and literally the tour guide opens up the door and the entire tour guide group correctly goes oh like it's just a collective group gasp all at once. It's that incredible that it takes your breath away. And I think that itself, um, I took a ton of pictures of it. I did actually get a little bit of video while I was in there, so I will share with you. I hope it does it justice because it is just so like sparkling and stunning and like grand in person. And apparently you can host both public and private functions in there, including weddings. So. There you go. If that's your cup of tea, you could get married in the Arab room. I went to the to the stock exchange palace it was a, almost like 3 45 4 p.m and i thought to myself jessica it is decision time you can either kind of go wander around lots of little side streets and see what you see or you can get an ice cream you can walk yourself across the river to gaia and you can do more port tasting so what do you think i decided well, if you decided that I would get an ice cream and then go in pursuit of more port, you would be right. Let's just say I'm pretty hooked. And I had such an incredible experience going to Graham's the other day that I felt, 
I probably should experience other port houses. So I have something to base it against. So I decided that because it was 4 p.m. and most of the port houses close around 6 p.m. on Sundays, I would actually go and try Taylor's. I had heard that the tasting room is in this beautiful rose garden. And they also do self-guided tours. So for 15 euros, you can do the self-guided tour where you have like a little headset that you put up to your ear. You kind of get to like roam free in their cellar. And there's a whole kind of guided experience that you can do. And then after that, in the price of your 15 euro self-guided tour, you get two port tastings in the little tasting garden. So I said, well, that sounds great. Two grams tour you don't necessarily need to do the taylor's tour i actually enjoyed the grams tour more um because it was someone guiding the tour they it was interactive you could ask questions they went a lot into the education of how port is made where it's made kind of the the kind of uh, uh the french oak barrels and kind of the craftsmanship that goes into it however what was interesting at taylor's is they did show you a little bit more into you know kind of the work that goes into maintaining the barrels which i thought was kind of cool they also had a lot more kind of historical artifacts in kind of the kind of tour that you wandered through and you get to kind of run loose in their wine cellar and take all the selfies and pictures that you want. So you can kind of decide. I think if you don't have time for Grams, definitely do the Taylor's tour. If you have time to do Grams, do that tour and don't do the Taylor's tour. room at Taylor's because granted you know for 15 euros I got two glasses of port um, I didn't love them as much as I liked the Graham's port tour and I will say on the menu at Taylor's it was overall more pricey so the two tastings that I got from Taylor's totaled about eight euros together on the Taylor's menu so you could do that and you could also add like a third into it for more money for like the 15 euro equivalent of what I paid for at grams but i also got like an hour tour at grams out of it so i think a bit more bang for your buck there for 15 euros however for around like 30 euros they have a bunch of like mo like more than three kind of tasting type experiences so i might look at that or i might do like three at taylor's with some snacks but either way the tasting room at taylor's is definitely more lovely than Graham's. You're in this like beautiful like little garden terrace. Um, there's rose plants everywhere which if you know me and how much I love roses that is super close to my heart and there was actually like a rooster in the middle of the rose plants that then like climbed out and was kind of like hanging at all of our tables. <laughs> as well as peacocks roam the grounds there and there's like cute little cats that roam around and kind of come under your table to say hi so 
a little bit more kind of cute and homey there and fun so i really enjoyed that um yeah so i definitely would recommend i mean i would definitely recommend you do both um for sure so you know what they say about what goes up it also must go down let me show you after a little bit of port tasting when i get to walk down back to the gaia waterfront wish me luck Dun, 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 dun. Not for the faint of heart. Do your first tasting here and then go. Okay, and then after that, I walked back over the bridge on the lower half of the bridge back into Porto and I went to a scenic lookout point, which I'm going to get the name of it for you. So I read about this multiple times when I was looking at Porto as one of the kind of cool scenic lookout points that you should check out. It's called Mirad, Miradoro da Vitoria. You do have to climb up some stairs. It, it wasn't really that bad. Not as bad as the kind of bottom of the Pont Dom Louise one bridge up into Porto. Much better. So I climbed up those and you basically kind of climb up through and it's it's basically a scenic viewpoint next to this like abandoned building. Um, but there's a lot of people there. It doesn't feel unsafe at all, but it's, yeah, it's a building where like a lot of the windows are like blasted out. It's just, it is what it is. The views are actually really good. I was wondering if this was like all hype and not worth it, but it actually, I would say it is pretty worth it. Cause, um, I had done the scenic viewpoints close to the bridge. I had done scenic viewpoints on the other side of the bridge and you know, others obviously on some roof terraces and stuff that I went to, excuse me, but this one was actually kind of a bit over so you got like a nice angle angle um across port and it was uh, across porto and it was starting to get to be sunset when the light gets a bit more magical so i really enjoyed that and then from there it's actually a pretty nice kind of flat slash slightly downhill incline into the area kind of um by base and um I guess the the kind of famous bookstore the harry potter themed bookstore so really nice um i like that area a lot i've been doing pretty much all of my dinners in that area every night because i feel like still it's touristy but it's not as bad as like ribera and some of the other sites of porto so i really recommend that and then i figured you know what it's actually still pretty blazing hot even though it's almost eight o'clock at night um, in previous nights it was getting it usually gets pretty chilly pretty quickly when the Sun goes down um, But I didn't feel cold tonight um, So I decided instead to go to just find like a little tapas place and a pro tip is that actually on Sunday nights Like so much is closed in Porto and I was actually warned this on Sundays that a lot of the stores can be closed A lot of the restaurants are closed so I went to a place called Tapa and Friends, Tapas and Friends, um, was recommended pretty highly online and on Yelp. Um, I thought it was pretty good. I wouldn't say it's the best tapas I've ever had, but there's always a caveat. The staff there were incredible, like the nicest, friendliest, loveliest people I think I've come across um, in Porto. And I think in general, people I've met in Porto have just been wonderfully like friendly and accommodating and really kind to me as a solo traveler. But like this place I think really takes the cake. Um, and I had four different like tapas options, um, which I will intersperse here while I'm chit chatting with you. I had a, um, a Portuguese kind of soft cheese, which comes in like a little cast cask iron skillet kind of melted with some little melba toasts which was pretty yummy um i also had um it was like an octopus galateria which is basically an octopus that comes on kind of a kind of cooked potato with like in a bunch of like olive oil with seasonings which it looks you'll see it here on the screen it looks beautiful it it wasn't it was a little rubbery to be honest um not entirely my favorite but it looks beautiful. 
Um, however, I think my favorite of the meal was actually the ribs. So always ask for recommendations from kind of this. I think a lot of my eating this trip has been better because of recommendations from the people who work at the restaurants. So the, the woman had told me, oh, like the, the sweet ribs are really good. She was right, they were really lovely. And the asparagus was actually really lovely. And I really enjoyed the cheese. And because I kind of chatted up the staff most of the time, they actually gave me a free glass of port to finish my meal, which was really sweet and a nice touch. So um, I would recommend it if you go. I think um, the one thing I think I would recommend to order that I should, probably should have just asked them to recommend all of my dishes. I didn't I didn't do that. I really wanted octopus. So I like picked an octopus dish. Um, but I saw there's like this sausage dish on the menu that they, they actually bring like this grill out and there's like flames coming up and they cook it table side. Um, so I think you should order that because that just looked really cool. Um, but one of those places that was definitely like buzzing between, like mostly probably tourists, but definitely a few locals there as well. And all the people who work there are locals and they were giving me tons of other kind of sightseeing tips. So again, really, really great experience there. So with that said, that concludes day number three in Porto. I think another great day super relaxed kind of super chill day for me i still walked six miles <laughs> somehow um tomorrow is my last and final day i actually have a friend from boston that i am meeting up with which is cool so bostonians take on porto but i've got like a 6 p.m flight back to london so it won't be that long of a day for me so with that said i am going to finish my port i'm going to edit some pictures and I'm gonna pack so I can hit the ground running in the morning. So, cheers!